cut your own records at home. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Welcome back to Good News Next Week. Solution stories and some of the ways that we are winning this time on Good News Next Week. Portable vinyl lathe lets you cut your own records at home. People are abandoning the FANG products. And some good news on prisons and so-called drugs. But our cover story... I'm excited about this one. Portable vinyl lathe lets you cut your own records at home. Uh, my excitement, of course, is tempered by the price. Phonocut is a new home vinyl lathe that hopes to allow you to cut your own records in real time. According to Wired, and again, everything we say and play always be included in your show notes, working in real time, Phonocut uses a diamond stylus to cut 10-inch vinyl records, the, the rarest of record sizes, usually 7 or 12-inch, 10's the rarest, with each side able to hold between 10 to 15 minutes of audio. As Wired said, Phonocut only needs an audio source and a blank acetate to get started, and that's another place where your price is going to jump up on getting the blanks, essentially. As Phonocut co-founder Florian Doc Caps told Wired, it has to be idiot-proof. Even I myself should be in a position to cut the records. While there is a certain novelty to the idea of cutting any digital file to vinyl, Phonocut's production credentials include that of Swiss mastering engineer Flo Kaufman, one of the last remaining lathe repair experts in the world. They have crushed their Kickstarter goal pretty much by double. They were only trying to get 220000 They are knocking on the door of half a million dollars raised. Basic cost for us here in the U.S. to get one of these cutters and some blanks is about 1500 bucks. So that's not too bad considering what you essentially get out of this deal. And a lot of big fancy just turntables themselves that just play the records can almost be that much money. Phonocut, home vinyl recorder. I'll give you the Kickstarter links as well. Start saving your pennies. And we'll bundle in with this first set of stories here on this Good News Next Week, episode 81. Students create video game to help people learn Lakota language. Dateline Madison, South Dakota. Uh, learning another language can be hard for anybody. And of course, the older you get, the harder it gets. But one Kilo Land, South Dakota student, hoping a video game will be a resource for people wanting to learn the Lakota language. You start and you're in this field. And there's the materials to create a teepee. Poles, rope, and canvas. A traditional hide canvas that would go over a teepee. Student, lead designer, founder, Northern Plains Games, Carl Peterson says, but what makes it different is it's in the Lakota language. Dakota State University student Carl Peterson, who grew up on the Cheyenne River Reservation, created the game Teepee Kaga, which in the Lakota language means teepee builder. One of the ideas in making the game in Lakota was to allow people to engage with it in a way it might be more difficult to engage with a more traditional text or even finding a fluent speaker, so it may make it a little easier for people to interact with the language. A fantastic idea, and of course that would work for any sorts of languages you wanted to try and learn. Our second set of stories here on Good News Next Week, episode 81, is basically about ways that people are pushing back against the powers that shouldn't be, the fangsters, you name it. Home builders abandoning Nest products after forced Google migration. Some of Google Nest's, and this is essentially this, you know, spy on you, you know, smart home assistance garbage that I'm just amazed that so many people are going for. Some of Google Nest's biggest partners seem to be leaving Nest, according to a report by Bloomberg. You know, that guy that's going to run for president. The group of folks includes home builders of all kinds, from private residences to large apartment complexes, and it's all based on Google's decision to replace the Works With Nest system with its own Works With Assistant one. Now, I don't even actually understand what some of these things are called, because all I know is they're spy on you smart grid surveillance bits. That's pretty much the start and end of it. You want to put a spy device in your house, you're going to get the results out of that. And all you got to do is just search Nest, hacked, Alexa, hacked, Ring, hacked. And they're all just Internet of Things garbage. And it keeps coming. Frackers might get fracked as energy innovation lowers the cost of solar. Our buddy Jay Harvey Lewis of Nature Hub submits this one. The global energy transition happening faster than the models predicted, according to a report released by the Rocky Mountain Institute. Massive investments in the advanced battery technology system. The cost of solar just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. And then that way we might not have to frack ourselves to death from pretty much right nearby here up in Colorado to even, of course, unfortunately, in my home state of West by God, Virginia. Our buddy Still Scenes on the tweets at Still Scenes. And again, you can submit stories for Good News Next Week using hashtag Good News Next Week or any of the awesome Media Monarchy hashtags. That's how you get into the episodes. 
just try and ignore the part that this is brought to you by the Rockefeller Foundation and the Guardian. U.S. City prepares itself for collapse of capitalism. Kingston, New York, a diverse city of 23,000 flanked to the east by the Rondout Creek and the Hudson River, and to the west, the Catskill Mountains. It boasts a rustic industrial waterfront, colorful historic district, revolutionary war era stone buildings, a stranger might call it bucolic. The streets of Uptown are bustling with eateries and of late, places to buy velvet halter dresses, vintage boleros, CBD tinctures, and LCD tea kettles with precision pour spouts. But strolling by ten-year-old half-moon books, passers-by might glimpse a different side of this city. The bookshop's windows exclusively feature nonfiction on the end of the world as we know it. I started out putting together a window of utopias, says bookseller Jessica DuPont, but somehow I ended up with the death throes of capitalism. So all the cringy fake activist BS aside, because everything went terrible three years ago. Everything was great right before then, right? This falls under what The Guardian calls their cities, subsites, and all you have to do is click the tiny little thing in the site that says about The Guardian Cities Project, and you click on it and it says, yeah, this is pretty much run by the Rockefeller Foundation, about The Guardian City site, supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. Some of the other way, but I guess I, ultimately why I include that is because that's something we essentially should all kind of be working on. Remember how prepping used to be kind of a thing and it's all seeming to fall by the wayside? I don't think things have gotten any more positive as far as the, you know, collapse of society goes. Hey, speaking of the collapse of society, Jessica Wax My Balls Yanov loses the tribunal case hearing. A British Columbia human rights tribunal ruled in favor of the female beauty salon workers who refused to wax the male genitalia of Jessica Yanov. And the last insult to Jessica Yanov, they had to pay 6000 bucks for improper conduct. So that's some low-hanging lulls, but we'll take it here on episode 81 of Good News Next Week, our final set of stories. Essentially, again, just the, the, we laugh a lot of times, but oh, thanks state for giving us back rights that were never yours to take or grant in the first place. But again, this is sort of, like we say, it's become our rallying cry. Sometimes freedom's scary looking. Chicago follows Oakland and decriminalizes psychedelic plants. This comes via our buddy Dylan uh, Sacascio on the tweets. Chicago's efforts follow in the footsteps of Denver and Oakland. Two other large U.S. cities which passed similar measures earlier this year. Womp womp update. Sources have indicated that the resolution as currently introduced is non-binding. Meanwhile, the photos are fantastic. It's great to see people getting out of cages for victimless crimes. Oklahoma releases nearly 500 inmates in a push to end mass incarceration. This comes from the very excited High Times account. Nearly 500 inmates set free from prison in Oklahoma this past Monday. The move by state officials comes in response to a push to reduce mass incarceration in Smoklahoma. That was put into motion by my votes in 2016. The Friday before, Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board voted to recommend that the sentences for 527 state inmates be commute, commuted by Republican Governor Kevin Stitt. Of those, 426 released from custody on Monday after being processed and receiving Stitt's signature, and it was all essentially over a bunch of BS cannabis laws. Now suddenly, as we've noted on our morning show, Smoklahoma didn't have to put it to a vote, didn't have to create some big tax and trace boondoggle bureaucratic system. They just said it's decriminalized. And that's the best you can hope for in all of your cities. I don't want a tax and trace thing. I just don't want to get thrown in a box for victimless crimes. We pretty much believe that free and sovereign human beings are able to put whatever they want in and up their body as long as they are consenting adults. God love them. Your creator love them. Whichever. Love them. We just want people to be free. And those people in Smoklahoma are. Last little bit of it was, of course, Selection Day last week. Texas voters approved constitutional ban on state income tax. Texas voters approved an amendment to the state's constitution banning an income tax. While Texas is already one of seven states that does not have an income tax, the amendment will make it extremely difficult to ever impose such a tax in the future. And we talk generally about how most of the time, as far as the personalities go, voting is a giant emotional con game and waste of time. 
However, if you can take the chance to go in and say, no, you can't steal money from me for that. No, you shouldn't lock people into cages for that. If you can go and sell them, no, 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 no. That's pretty much the best use of, I think, your vote. That's pretty much how I did it the last few years in peak Portland. But we're down here in Holy Faith, New Hexaco, my friends, and that wraps up episode 81 of Good News Next Week. Some of the ways that we are winning. Solutions-oriented stories. Positive things. It's not the end of the world, you guys. They just want us to think it is sometimes. So we go running to the powers that shouldn't be to save us when they've caused a lot of the problems in the first place. Again, it is a lot of it. It's a, it's a revolution of the mind. A lot of things to go through, and I appreciate you being here. We do a lot of great things, I think, in the Media Monarchy community. These last couple of years, since we've been able to build the members-only Media Monarchy community and chat stream, all kinds of chat rooms where we're able to share information about gardening and parenting and automotive fixes and repair and DIY, it's pretty amazing. I, I sometimes have to like, stop and, and take a step back and feel humbled at the amazing amount of stuff that people work in. And it's not about me at all. You don't have to hang out and listen to my show at all in the Media Monarchy community. It's as low as a dollar a month gets you into the chat, and you can pretty much just hang out and essentially be with like-minded folks, learning our way forward, if you will. So I'd love to see you come support us and hang out with us in the Media Monarchy community. MediaMonarchy.com slash join, and we do indeed stream live news, music, memes, and more Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 Mountain Time, the best damn radio station you never heard, and we will shut this baby down. Episode 81 of Good News Next Week. Cut your own records at home. Indeed, I am James Evan Pilato from MediaMonica.com saying thank you so much for listening. And, of course, thanking you for supporting our work. A little extra note as we've been doing these last uh, week or so, reminding you at the end of episodes that Epstein didn't kill himself. And, of course, like Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedy says, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. You're listening to Media Monarchy with James Evan Pilato. Since 2005. Media Monarchy has covered the real news about politics, health, technology and the occult, all remixed with music and media that matters. Go to MediaMonarchy.com slash support and become a monthly subscriber so you can help keep independent, non-commercial, alternative media going and growing. Thanks.